Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TSEPs and Fast Films. I want to talk to you right now about one of the little used routines, but one of the really hot routines. And this is the black and white and sepia tone routine. If you click on the About button, that tells you about the routine. And it just tells you that it's going to make an old photo look or a black and white look using various levels of color. Let's just click on Run Sepia Tone Old Photo. And the program prompts you and tells you, of course, that you need to load the masked version first. Let's run it on this image that I've used quite a bit called Airshow because it can have a, a nice vintage look when it's done. And the program loads the masked version and cooks for a minute. It wants you to load the unmasked or the white version second. Now when you're done, it's going to make a six color set of seps, but because it's using some gray tones and some sepia tones, you can reduce the color count, and if it's going on a light shirt, you can get this down to a four color print. Now TSEPs converted the file into grayscale, so this is the image as a grayscale image, and certainly you could just print this out and half tone the entire design and print it on a shirt, but it wouldn't be rich. The rich look you get when you see these, these rich black and white and old photo looks really have a number of gray levels. So let's take a look at There's the underbase first, a typical underbase. There's the image that's going to be for a darker gray, and the program does give you the Pantone equivalent, the Pantone callout. There's for the medium sepia, light sepia, black, and highlight white. Now the default is a black shirt in the program, and we're going to click on the shirt color, put the eye on the underbase. That's what it looked like with just the underbase on a black shirt. There's then the dark gray, medium sepia, light sepia, and highlight white. Now we don't print black ink on a black shirt, so it's a one, two, three, four, five color print on a black shirt. Let's change the shirt color. These designs look pretty good on more of a cream color shirt. You typically see them on a shirt color somewhat like that. Now I've got to print the black plate. I could leave the highlight on. We'll turn it off and you'll see the highlight does enhance it. So if you can print all six colors, great. But if not, you can turn the highlight off. And let's see what happens if we reduce the color count. Let's take off the light sepia. See, on this shirt, it's not so bad. It's about the shirt color the light CP is, and so we take it off. That's the actual color that it's looking for. I do need, uh, no, the medium CP is not bad. The gray I do need. The gray is the body of the plane, and the underbase I do need, although if you want to give it more of a vintage look on a natural shirt, you can turn off the underbase, turn off the highlight, and just let it be just like that. You have a lot of control. Obviously, you can do adjustments. Maybe you think you need a little more underbase. You can click on the underbase channel, go to Image, Adjustments, Curves, and take the tone curve and boost it quite a bit. You don't see much difference on this shirt. There we go. We're we'll seeing more underbase there. Not a big change because we're on a light shirt color. Now, the black and white routine is the same, only it gives you gray levels rather than the sepia tones. So it gives you a dark gray, medium gray, and a light gray. So the black and white routine runs the same way. To output these separations, click on Outputting Black and White Sepia, and it tells you that you're going to print all channels at 55 LPI for the frequency of the halftone dot, angle of 25 degrees, and use an elliptical dot shape. So it prompts you there. If we go to the File pull-down menu, and come down to either print or print with preview depending on what version of Photoshop you have. This is on CS3 and this is a little bit big for my screen capture. I'll move this over. Photoshop changed a few things around in later versions. If you're in earlier versions of Photoshop you may see somewhere a button down on the left that says color management. We want to change that to output. We want to tell the program that we want registration marks. If we want registration marks, we want labels on the actual file. We need to tell it to scale to fit the media. And we would typically choose a PostScript printer or a RIP driver, depending on how we're going to output this. Because the way we're going to print this right now, the printer has to make the halftone dots. I'm just scaling it to fit the media so that you can see the registration marks. Now we're going to print center crop marks. You can see them right there. We can say print corner crop marks if we want, registration marks if we want. We can see them appearing on the films. You can see them right there. So these are things that are optional, but the important thing is we want to go to the screen button, and we want to uncheck use printer's default, and drop down the ink drop down, and it shows us our various colors. So for the underbase white, we're going to change it to a 55 
line count, 25 degree angle, elliptical dot shape, and we'll drop it down for the dark gray, 55, 25 ellipse, and we'll do that for every color, and we'll say OK. Now we print the print button. Our postscript printer will print out the separations with the correct halftone line count and angle. And we'll put these on the recommended mesh counts, typically of 230 for the underbase, and you could go 305 for the top colors, but this design is more forgiving because it really is there really there's no reference. We're not trying to match the colors anymore. And that is the uh, the beauty of this routine. Now, if we haven't got a rip in our in our printer, we're just printing to like a laser printer or printing to an inkjet printer with no driver, we could click on convert black and white and old photo to half tones. And this routine gives you lots of help screens and basically it converts the entire file into pre-done pre-half tone films ready to print out. And that is the black and white and old photo sepia tone routine.